Artificial general intelligence will not come within the next 10 years, let alone the next five, and that is my honest opinion. Now, there are many things I cannot predict accurately, but this thing I am pretty sure on. So certain, in fact, that I will happily shave my head on stream live if I'm wrong. That being said, I may not have any hair by then to do that. So why talk about this? Not, not the Baldi thing, the AGI thing. Well, beyond AGI just being incredibly interesting and almost certainly world-changing when it does come around, there has been a lot of buzz around this recently. It seems anytime I go online, I cannot escape the popularity of this idea. There's been so much news and so many articles covering papers like Dolly 2 and Gato, the latter of which is supposedly proof that AGI is just around the corner, according to many people. Metaculus, which is a site that is dedicated to forecasting these types of impactful changes, updated their arrival of weak AGI prediction to 2028. And what clearly has more authority than any of that and is much more important, my YouTube comment section. Apparently lots of you think that AGI is coming very soon. And while this is half a joke, I really am doing this because I disagree with you. Well, sorry, maybe not you exactly, but many of my viewers. And to be fair, I disagree with lots of people on the other side of the aisle too, like me that believe AGI isn't coming soon. Well, I don't love lots of the arguments that lots of those people give, especially when they dismiss lots of the incredible recent progress from deep learning and massive scaling. So whichever side you're on, I do welcome you to disagree and let me know why in the comment section. But before that, I ask that you listen to why I think what I do, why I think AGI is not coming soon. And while you're at it, consider subscribing to this channel where I like to cover a mix of bigger topics to keep you up to date, but also lesser known interesting ideas to, well, introduce you to new ideas. So to get us started, let's first make sure that we are clear on a definition. What is artificial general intelligence? And I think the fact that some people actually have slightly different definitions of this may be part of the problem. But setting that aside for now, the popular definition of AGI is an AI that can do anything a human can do. Now I'm going to add a little caveat here and say AI that can do anything a human can do, assuming it has the hardware to make that physically possible. For example, if we were to have a super intelligent AI in a computer, but it couldn't walk because, well, it didn't have legs, I think that should still count. Now, with that definition in mind, I actually want to start out by playing devil's advocate. I think the AGI soon argument starts with Moore's law, an observation that shows we tend to get around a two times boost in compute for the same cost around every two years. That means that we have exponentially scaling compute, which alone is crazy. To add to that, there's recently been plenty of work on hardware specialized for AI, like TPUs, which are many times faster than non-specialized hardware. If these trends continue, that would mean in five years, we would have roughly six times the amount of compute we do now, in 10 years, about 30 times the amount of compute, and in only 20 years, we would have over 1,000 times the amount of compute that we have now. Next, we turn a page to look at the software side of things, and we can see that the field has had ridiculously rapid success ever since 2012 when deep learning methods started to outpace classical methods and gain popularity. The massive influx in machine learning research since then has resulted in superhuman performance in computer vision tasks, like classification and image segmentation, as well as also reaching near human performance in many natural language processing tasks and superhuman performance in a number of games. Then to really put the cherry on top of all of that, lots of scaling work in natural language processing seems to suggest that models improve log linearly with increased scaling, meaning that every order of magnitude of compute we add, these models get one step better. When you add exponentially increasing compute, massive funding and research efforts, and great scaling properties of machine learning, it's hard to imagine what we won't be able to achieve in the near term. For those reasons, I think the AGI soon argument seems to always be based around scaling. You can even see this manifest in industry with companies like OpenAI who have put all of their money and resources into pretty much just scaling. And you know, I can see why a lot of people think just scaling will get us there. I never cease to be amazed by the results of new projects like Dolly 2, which can generate realistic images, or DeepMind's AlphaStar 2, which can play StarCraft at a near professional level. But scaling will not get us there. Rather, scaling alone will not get us there. It will undoubtedly play a role. However, even when scaling, there are likely still pieces of the puzzle that are missing that scaling alone just can't replace. I may not know exactly what those pieces are. Heck, if I did, I would be coding them up right now and making millions of dollars. But I can show you consistent shortcomings of our models that indicate what these missing pieces might be. 
Let's, for instance, go back to something I mentioned earlier. Recent models have been reaching near-human level performance on a number of language tasks. The Multitask Language Understanding Dataset, or MMLU for short, is one such benchmark that has over 50 tasks that are partitioned into different categories like humanities, social sciences, and STEM. And if you look at just the progress over the past three years since GPT-2 was released, we have gone from an accuracy of 32% on this task all the way up to 68% with the most recent model chinchilla. That progress is very impressive, and it makes it tempting to think that we could just keep scaling these types of models until we get to that near 100% accuracy mark. But not only is that probably not the case, even if it were, that doesn't mean that it would be enough to get us to AGI. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at a slightly different metric. DeepMind recently put out a paper where they trained several models of various sizes, ranging from 44 million to 280 billion parameters to try and measure the effects of scaling massive language models. Their largest 280 billion parameter model was called Gopher and became the new state of the art in many language tasks. And in the paper, we can see how close state of the art models are to human expert performance in a variety of language tasks. Well, yes, we are getting close in a couple areas like humanities and social sciences, we are still very far off in other areas like STEM, medicine, and especially in math specifically. And remember, AGI must be able to do everything a human can do, not just some things. We can take a look at another graph from the same paper that I think is even more damning. Here you can see the improvement of this model over previous state-of-the-art methods. While the model improves significantly in many areas, it still really struggles with math, common sense, and some logical reasoning tasks. For math specifically, this paints a really bad picture when combined with what we saw before. Not only do state-of-the-art language models have a hard time getting above chance accuracy on these mathematics tasks, but further scaling doesn't seem to help. They even mention this in the paper, noting our results suggest that for certain flavors of mathematical or logical reasoning tasks, it is unlikely that scale alone will lead to performance breakthroughs. In some cases, Gopher has a lower performance than smaller models, examples of which include the abstract algebra and temporal sequences from Big Bench, and high school mathematics from MMLU. I'm guessing many of you are thinking that it's unfair of me to focus and criticize so much just based on this math and logical reasoning argument while scale is drastically helping on nearly all of these other tasks. But I focus on it, I promise, not just to be negative, but because I think it's indicative of a much larger issue with these large language models. And that issue is the lack of what some people refer to as level two intelligence. I'm not sure if there's an agreed upon definition for this, but what I'm referring to is intelligence that requires abstract logic and reasoning abilities. I don't think that the presence of level two intelligence is necessarily a binary thing, but it does seem clear to me that current massive models are lacking this and that scale has not done a whole lot to help out in this area. I focus on this specifically because these traits are what allow us to achieve an incredibly important feat that AI lacks, and that's what's called out of distribution generalization. And this is the idea that you can learn something in one scenario and then reapply it in another scenario where there may not be any immediate similarities between the two different settings. Take for instance the case where you as a human are playing a game for the first time where you have to control a car from a top-down perspective. Now as a human, even if you don't have experience looking at a car from the top-down, you would probably still be able to figure out how to play this game very quickly, and that's because you have experience either driving a car in first person or watching other people drive cars. Even if you don't have that exact experience of looking top down, you can abstract what you've learned before and apply it to this new situation. On the other hand, if we took an AI model and trained it on this first person driving data, but then during test time, gave it a third person driving game, do you know what would happen? It would fail miserably. Matter of fact, there's a chance that the first person driving data could even hinder its later learning process. One example that's even more incredible is our ability to learn from instructions and conversations. Have you ever thought about how incredible that is? We have the ability to listen to another person and then from that alone, be able to tackle another task that we have almost no prior experience in. There is some research that tries to teach AI how to learn from instructions in this way, but there is nothing at all that can teach AI how to learn from instructions and then apply those instructions to training examples outside of its narrow training distribution. These things that I've listed that humans can do, I think they require the same sort of skills or at least similar ones that are required for math. And as you saw previously from that research, it doesn't look like scaling is doing all that much to help out in this area. Now, let me address two counter arguments that I hear all the time. The first is that maybe our models just don't perform as well because they don't have access to the vast amounts of diverse data that humans do as they grow up. 
Recent language models like Chinchilla are trained with hundreds of billions of text tokens, which are likely much more than a single human will ever read in their lifetime. That being said, I do agree that seeing just text data is very limiting. Having access to diverse data is also essential. If, for example, we go back to my previous example of driving the car, you would be right to point out that the difference with a human is, well, a human has a lot of prior experience looking at a diverse array of 3D objects from many different viewpoints. And that could absolutely give a human an unfair advantage over an AI that has been trained with just first-person driving data. And in regards to this, this is exactly what Google's recent paper Gato looked into. It trained the same model on both textual and visual data, and then used that model to play a variety of games and control robots. That paper absolutely blew up and is partially what prompted this video. But funny enough, it actually provided no conclusive evidence that training on a diverse set of multimodal data would help in generalization. Sure, you could keep on this path and try and add more different types of diverse data and keep adding different modalities, and then maybe eventually you'll get something but at least as of now, there's not much in the research to suggest that that's the case. And the second argument that I always hear is that maybe these large models just haven't been scaled up enough. Sure, maybe scaling isn't helping in some tasks right now, but maybe that's just because we haven't hit a certain threshold yet. And sure, I guess I can't say that you're wrong. That could be the case. And something similar to this has been seen in the past. When Gopher hits 280 billion parameters, it quote unquote unlocks the ability to perform above chance accuracy on the truthful QA benchmark. Though I am a bit skeptical that just one example like this means that scaling would be able to unlock anything, let alone an incredibly challenging problem like out of distribution generalization. In my opinion, the strongest evidence for this argument actually lies in the human brain itself. Jeff Hawkins is a neuroscientist who proposed the thousand brains theory. And the thousand brains theory essentially states that the human brain started off having a generalizable module and that we arrived at the current human brain by taking that one module and repeating it numerous times. And if that really is the case, maybe us humans ourselves unlocked our level two intelligence by something akin to scaling. This idea is definitely interesting, but I don't think it's entirely convincing, at least not yet, for two main reasons. One is just that I don't have the neuroscience background to fully judge how realistic this idea is. And the second reason is that even if we as humans were able to get to where we are today by scaling a certain module in the brain, that doesn't necessarily mean that scaling an artificial neural network as they are now will have the same result because, well, artificial neural networks don't work the same way the brain does. And we may have yet to find that quintessential module that can be scaled to infinity if it even exists in the first place. So needless to say, I am skeptical, but let me give these arguments the benefit of the doubt. So let's say that if we scale enough and have enough diverse multimodal data, that eventually we will be able to reach superhuman performance on all these different types of NLP benchmarks. Heck, I'll even go further and say, let's say we can do the same for computer vision vision and games. Even in that case, I still think it's likely that we will not have artificial general intelligence at that time. And the issue at the core of all of this is, I think, supervised learning. Supervised learning is a type of machine learning that learns to mimic pre-trained data, usually human-generated data. Now, I may be wrong. Maybe we can solve all these different tasks and benchmarks with just supervised learning. What about other tasks? Are we going to have to generate new data for every little task we want an AI to solve? One quintessential thing that makes humans human is our ability to surpass what any human before has achieved. No matter how seemingly obscure, we have the ability to realize solutions that have never before existed, for problems that have never before been addressed. And while I will not claim that AI trained with supervised learning does not have the ability to be creative or that it doesn't have the ability to come up with novel solutions in foreign scenarios, I will claim that its ability to do so is limited and I don't think that supervised learning alone can reach that milestone. At the very least, that's what the research that I presented to you today seems to suggest. And that's why I don't think we're gonna reach AGI in the next five years or the next 10. To be clear though, I do think we will reach AGI. As a matter of fact, I think it's inevitable. And up to this point, this video has been filled with plenty of skepticism. So now let me show you a little bit of optimism. While I don't think AGI will come within the next 10 years, I don't think it's impossible either. Matter of fact, I think it's quite probable within the next 20 to 30 years. As I pointed out, I don't think that supervised learning with just scaling will be the only things we need to reach AGI, but I do think that both of these will play an incredibly important part. Supervised learning is a great tool to bootstrap our agents with knowledge. 
I also think that there's many very promising avenues out there that answer to many of the flaws of supervised learning in the context of AGI. Self-supervised learning seems to be an incredibly potent tool for important problems like learning representations, and reinforcement learning is a great problem setting that allows AI to surpass humans given the right algorithms. These areas are still not fully matured, at least not as much as supervised learning, but there are undoubtedly many amazing people working on these, many interesting ideas in the works, and very rapid progress. If you're watching this video because you, like me, are fascinated with the idea of AGI and want to be someone that contributes or is already contributing, I urge you to take a deeper look at some of the areas I've mentioned today. There are a lot of interesting ideas out there, and the more dedicated people we have working on these ideas, the faster we'll get there. I also cover a whole lot of that on my channel, so if you've enjoyed enough to watch to this point, do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I have a whole lot more content like this and a lot more planned. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you next time.